Good morning. Welcome to Christ Lutheran Church. It's sunny beyond the clouds, but it's a beautiful day, and we're going to have a great picnic. We invite you to come and join us for our picnic. It'll begin at noon here on the lawn. So right now, as we prepare for worship, let us uh, begin with a few announcements. The picnic begins. Um, we have fun and games, and hymn sing, ice cream, and a closing prayer, and beautiful music. We invite you to stay or come at noon. Let's see. We ask for prayers for the Virginia Synod this coming weekend as we meet in summer assembly at Rono College. And um, first and foremost on the agenda is the election of a new bishop. Bishop Bob Humphreys is retiring after this term, and we will be electing a new bishop next weekend. So pray for the Synod, pray for our delegates, and pray for the new bishop. Journey Together for Vacation Bible School is at the end of the month on the 23rd, 24th, and 25th. and begins Friday at 5.30 with dinner and activities. Saturday we meet from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. with lunch provided. And then Sunday uh, we meet from 9 to 11, beginning with this worship service and then melding into Vacation Bible School and finishing before the 11 o'clock service. Any questions, as always, ask Pastor Cindy. If you haven't already gotten it in the mail, the summer bingo card uh, is, can be printed from an email or news, newsletter. And you play along throughout the summer. You share pictures on Facebook and Instagram. Bring your completed or partially completed card to the bingo party on August 27th at 10 a.m. for prizes, food, fellowship, and more bingo. If you're wondering how you play bingo online and through the summer, look it up. It's amazing. And at this time, let us begin our worship as we continue with the confession and forgiveness as it is found on page one of our bulletin, which is available at ChristLutheranRoanoke.org. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who greets us in this and every season whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and our neighbors. Merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we have sinned, we have hurt our community, we have squandered your blessings, we have hoarded your bounty. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. Righteous God, we confess that we have sinned, we have failed to be honest, we have lacked the courage to speak, we have spoken falsely. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. God is a cup of cold water when we thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy, for you are freed and forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.
Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty Creator and ever-living God, we worship your glory, eternal three in one, and we praise your power, majestic one in three. Keep us steadfast in this faith, defend us in all adversity, and bring us at last into your presence, where you live in endless joy and love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from 2 Corinthians. Paul writes, Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Pastor C. I got you. I'll just take this. Okay. <laughs> it is time for our children's message. All right. Lendon, Lendon. There we go. One, two, three, four. All right. Hurry up, Naomi. They're going to be Well, I like your time. That's awesome. So, as usual, I brought a book. Today is Holy Trinity Sunday, and your homework today is going to be to write a 55-page treatise on... What that means, all right? <laughs> so I'd, I'd like, and I'd like it in print, double space by tomorrow. You got that? No. Okay. Well, you think that's too much for you? It's too much for me too. So we'll let we'll let Pastor Dave talk to us about that. But on Holy Trinity Sunday, we remember that God is Father, Son, Holy Spirit, more than we can imagine, and God is. Hard to explain. God is unexplainable, right? God is mystery. And so we know God by many names. And so I wanted to read you this little book, God Saying to Us, You Are My I Love You, and to be thinking about all the things that God is to each of us. God says, I am your parent, you are my child, I am your quiet place. You are my wild. God says, I am your calm face. You are my giggle. I am your weight. You are my wiggle. I am your carriage ride. You are my king. I am your push. You are my swing. I am your audience. You are my clown. I am your London bridge. You are my falling down. I am your carrot sticks. You are my licorice. I am your dandelion. You are my first wish. I am your water wings. You are my deep. I am your open arms. You are my running leap. I am your way home. You are my new path. I am your dry towel. You are my wet bath. I am your dinner. You are my chocolate cake. I am your bedtime, you are my wide awake. We certainly do keep that awake, huh? I am your finish line, you are my race. I am your praying hands, you are my saying grace. I am your favorite book, you are my new lines. I am your nightlight, you are my star shine. I am your lullaby, you are my peekaboo. I am your goodnight kiss, you are my... I love you. <coughs> so your real homework today is to be thinking about all of those things that God is to you. And what are some names that you would think of for God? Or what are some things about God that you love and that you would like to share with other people? Let's pray. Loving God, we thank you. We thank you for coming to us as Father, as Son, as Holy Spirit, as Healer, 
as lover, as friend, as good night, as good morning, as light <coughs> for our days. Amen. Thanks for coming up. The Holy Gospel comes to us today from the 28th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Today is Holy Trinity Sunday, a day when we lift up the awesomeness of God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. In 2 Corinthians 13, Paul writes, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Early on in Christendom, we had a concept of God beyond just God, Yahweh, or even the Messiah, Jesus. But we understood the importance of the Spirit that Jesus said he would give us, the paraclete, the power, the ruach, the Spirit. From the Encyclopedia Britannica, we learn that the doctrine of the Trinity is one of the central Christian affirmations about God. It's rooted in the fact that God came to meet Christians in a threefold figure as creator, Lord of the history of salvation, father and judge, as revealed in the New Testament, to as the Lord who in the incarnated, incarnated figure of Jesus lived among human beings and was present in their midst as the resurrected one. And the third, the Holy Spirit, whom they experienced as the helper or intercessor or advocate in the power of the new life. Now, neither the word Trinity nor the doctrine appears in the New Testament. It was developed gradually over several centuries and through many controversies. An early church father, Tertullian, was the first to apply the term Trinity to God around 213. Then, over a century later, at the Council of Nicaea, the Trinity was finally confirmed as official church doctrine. And today, it's accepted, really, in all the historic confessions of Christianity. One of my favorite old hymns, Holy, 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 written in 1826 by Reginald Heber, states, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, all thy works shall praise thy name in earth and sky and sea. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. For me, the Trinity describes God as always and everywhere. There is no limit to God. Another word that comes from the scripture today, especially in Matthew's commission, where we are encouraged to go therefore, we find the word authority. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Trinity. And remember, this is my favorite, and remember, Jesus says, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. 
authority. The, the word itself, ecclesia, functions in two ways. First, it's the authority as a freedom to decide or a right to act without hindrance. All such authority begins with God, for there is no authority except from God. So, in the essence, refer, authority refers to the power, ability, or capability to complete an action. When Jesus says, speaking of himself, all authority has been given to me, that means all the importance, all the power, all the presence of God has been given to Christ. And then Christ gives us by Christ's authority. That same assurance of God's presence and essence in our lives, His power, God's Spirit, dwelling in and through us. Oswaldo Pena of Garrett Theological Seminary stated, if authority in Matthew 28 is in, interpreted as authority for service, as the as the use of ecclesia in Matthew seems to suggest, then the goal of Christian discipleship is not to conquer, but to liberate the world for Jesus' sake. And the power or the authority that is given to Christ and the power that in turn he conveys to his people is a power to do justice. It's only in Matthew that Jesus says, go and learn what this means. I deserve, desire mercy and that not sacrifice. And in, in Matthew, Jesus never leaves us because by his presence in the midst of his people, the risen Christ is announcing today the beginning of creation, the spirit of God creating, announcing and a new reality where people are being called to serve the world beyond any differences that may exist. We are given the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and with God, with the triune God, all things are possible. We can do wondrous things because of the nature of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. As creator, a new creation exists in and through us because of God. As a follower of Christ, we lift up the resurrected one with the assurance of life everlasting with God. And with the Holy Spirit, we are given power. We are given power and presence to do as God would have us do, to be the people of God and to live in this great new creation. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. With God, all things are possible. And you and I can do wonderful things because of this. Thanks be to God.
trusting in God's abundant mercy, let us offer our prayers for a world in need. Holy Three, Holy One, you call the church to make disciples of all nations, encourage bishops, pastors, and deacons in their proclamation of the gospel, and direct all the baptized into lives of humble service. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Three, Holy One, you spoke creation into being and called it good. Protect lands and waters threatened by human misuse and sustain living creatures of every kind. Wild animals, birds, fish, and every creeping thing. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Three, Holy One, you have given humanity authority over the earth. Raise up leaders who listen earnestly, speak honestly, and govern thoughtfully. Heal divisions between nations that we might agree with one another and live in peace. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Three, Holy One, you promise to be with us always to the end of the age. Surround those most in need of your healing presence, any who are lonely, all who are grieving, and those who are sick. We pray today especially for Lynn, Thelma, Aubrey, Anthony, Russell, Jerry, Marsha and Chris, Whitney. We ask for safe travels for Margo and for Jacob and Haley. We give thanks for the wedding of Zach and Lauren. God, in your mercy, hear Lord, our prayer. Lord. Holy Three, Holy One, you set the earth on its axis and we experience the seasons. Strengthen those enduring challenges this summer. Those who suffer in the heat, parents overwhelmed by childcare responsibilities, and children experiencing food insecurity outside of school. God, in your mercy, hear Lord, our Lord. prayer. Holy Three, Holy One, you give rest when our work is done. We give thanks. For George, Guy, John, Gina, and Linda. All the saints who now rest in you. Give confidence in the promise of resurrection in the age to come. God, in your mercy, hear Amen. our prayer. Receive our prayers and answer us, O God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Also with you. I invite you to share a sign of God's peace with those around you in person and online. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy, living, and loving God, we praise you for creating the heavens and the earth. We bless you for bringing Noah and his family through the waters of the flood, for freeing your people Israel from the bonds of slavery, and for sending your Son to be our Redeemer. We give you thanks for Jesus, who living among us healed the sick, fed the hungry, and with a love stronger than death, gave his life for others. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me.
Remembering, therefore, his life-giving death and glorious resurrection, we await your promised life for all this dying world. Breathe your spirit on us and on this bread and cup. Carry us in your arms from death to life that we may live as your chosen ones, clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All people are called to Christ's table. Come, eat what is good. Thanks be Thank to God. God. This time, if you are commuting in your car or at home, you are invited to take the bread and the wine. If you would like to come forward towards the curb here, Pastor Dave and I will serve you. body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
Now the God who calls across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest seed, bless, keep, and sustain you to the end of the age. Amen. Thank you.